everybody. Good morning and welcome to the Solmonade Show with Sonia where all things are possible. My name is Sonia Doswell and I am your host. I would like to first of all thank all of the viewers who have already been watching Solmonade on the internet for the last two and a half years. I thank you for your commitment and for your faithfulness. I have so enjoyed interacting with you uh, through the submissions of your comments and questions over the years and I trust that this would only continue as we transition into the next season via Twitter and Facebook. You know how to find us. Uh, for those of you who are tuning into the show for the first time, I extend a very warm welcome to you. I thank you for taking the time to tune in today, and I hope that you can carve out time in your schedule to meet us right here every week on The Solmanad Show with Sonia on KDSM Fox 17. We hope to exceed your expectations. So the question comes up all the time, what is Solmanad? Well, Solmanad stands for soul, mind, and body. Solmanad is all about being healthy, fit, and strong. We have guests on that, that talk about the charitable work that they've been doing. We've had philanthropists on uh, that talk uh, utilizing their, their ideals and, and sharing their creative minds with us. We've had many professional athletes that have been on. Um, however, when I talk to these professional athletes, I, I prefer to try to get more to the human side, the human story, uh, not focusing so much on the accolades on the court or on the field, but rather what got them to that place, that point in the first place, excuse me, uh, what is it that they needed to overcome? What were the challenges that were placed before them? How did they become victorious in this area? And these are, are nuggets of truth and, and ideas that, that we receive, I receive as a host and you as a viewer, and, and we hope that you can apply these to your life. Uh, we've had nutritionists on, uh, professional coaches, um, professional soccer players, um, business owners, life coaches, uh, many in the beauty industry as well. So this show is for men and women alike. Uh, people have asked, um, what type of, of content do we have uh, as it pertains to the mind? Well, we've had psychiatrists and, and psychotherapists that have been on. We've even done segments on dreams. Uh, it's a very interesting and intriguing subject. So the content is wide and varied, but it's always positive, it's always uplifting, and very encouraging. And then people have asked, who, who is Sonia Doswell? Where did I come from? Well, I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington, it, with a great loving family and a very uh, simple, modest home. I had a wonderful life there and in such a beautiful diverse city as Seattle. We moved here to Des Moines, uh, Iowa with my husband nine years ago. Been married 22 years now as of last week. Happy anniversary, hun. And we have three uh, amazing kids. Jordan is 19, our daughter is Simone is 17, and Darius is 15. So uh, I was an international flight attendant for 21 years. I've traveled the world and I've seen great things. I just want to share some of this with you today. But for now, let's go ahead and hear a word from our sponsor. Refresh your space with a little help from JY Design. From a simple update to a fully remodeled room, JY Design has you covered. I'm probably not your typical interior design customer. She was willing to do the small job, I guess. I mean, we weren't looking to do a whole room. We just wanted a plan so we could save and buy pieces as we go. And she was willing to do that for us. And she was really easy to work with. JY Design, your home, your style, my touch. Call today for a consultation. Ford F-Series is America's MVP, best-selling truck for 35 years straight. Truck Month is going on now at Noble Ford. Come into Noble Ford today and score a touchdown on an all-new 2012 Ford F-150 for only $351 a month. Even earn some extra yards and get a five-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty on your new F-150. Buy today and choose new tires or oil changes for life. It's Truck Month at Noble Ford of Indianola, online 24-7 at nobleford.com. Fall is just around the corner. Make sure your furnace is up to the task. Have Thrasher Service check your furnace for only $82. Thrasher Service offers Geostar geothermal heating and cooling, which can save you money on your heating bill. So before the cold weather hits, call Thrasher Service, serving the Des Moines area since 1978. Let our family at Thrasher Service make your family comfortable year round. Call us at 262-2229 or visit us online at thrasherservice.com. Things you no longer need for more money in your pocket. Hermes, fine jewelry. Why let it sit collecting dust? You're in a pinch and cash is a must. Why not take that old ring where cash is king? Sell things you no longer need for more money in your pocket. Hey, 
Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Soul Monad Show with Sonia. This is our very first show, it's a launch, and I thank each and every one of you for taking the time to tune in. We are here in Seattle, Washington, interviewing a very dear friend for our first show. Uh, I know at the end of our show we have the Fox lineup right after you finish watching us here on KDSM Fox 17. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce my guest, Nesby Glasgow. Nesby, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantabulous. <laughs> Good. Thank Thank you for joining us here on Soul Monad. Nesby has been a uh, guest uh, before, a few other times here on Soul Monad, and uh, I thank you for joining us here on the television show. Hey, it's my pleasure. Can't <laughs> wait to get started. <laughs> well, okay. Well, let's do that then. So, you were born and raised in Compton, California, correct? That is so true. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just get everybody up to speed. So, you are born and raised there in Compton, right there in Southern California. You yeah. came up to the University of Washington and became a Husky. Go dogs! in 1975. Loved it. <laughs> Loved Love the purple and gold. In fact, I see you wearing the hat there with the Huskies on the side. Mm -hmm. And you were a two-year All-American. You were a starter, and you played in the 1978 Rose Bowl. What are your, what are your memories about playing in that Rose Bowl? Uh, I remember as a little kid growing up, I always wanted to ride on the train at Disneyland. We would go to Disneyland all the time. Uh -huh. And I would fantasize that as a kid. I mean, I also fantasized I'd be for the University of Southern California. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, mm. to be on that train and, and to live and kind of reflect on those memories uh, was one of the most proudest moments in my life because mm. I actually got a chance to fulfill a dream. And I mean, mm -hmm. I, I always saw myself riding on that train. And then when it happened, it was like unbelievable. Uh, we had a great time at Disneyland. We ran into a lot of the players at Michigan. Uh, and it was one of those experiences that you never forget. And then not only that, just to play in the Rose Bowl, uh, uh, I remember one of the things that I, I shared with my teammates was that, you know, is that we're not just here to play in the Rose Bowl. I mm -hmm. said, I don't know about you, but 10, 15, 20 years from now, when I look at my Rose Bowl ring and watch, mm -hmm. I want to look at it knowing that we won this game. Right. Uh, and just going or being a participant in it w would not satisfy my individual goal, and, mm -hmm. and, and I hope it doesn't satisfy yours. And uh, I, I think a lot of guys really bought into that, and uh, we weren't intimidated by Michigan. I mean, they, they, they really had the history behind them, but I think that we believed all along that we were not only good enough, that we were going to win that game, and mm -hmm. we did. Mm -hmm. And you did, so yeah. they, they surely did buy into it, didn't they? Yeah, totally. Have you always been a leader? I, I, I know you today as, as a grown man. I know you're a leader today. Were, were you a, a leader as a, as a little boy as well as, as a college athlete? I'll say yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And because of that leadership, that helped me uh, mm -hmm. really stay, stay away from games. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I love sharing a story, if you don't mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Please. When I was 12 years old, we didn't have the boys and girls club. We had the boys club. And I remember mm -hmm. uh, uh, they came by in the vans and took us to Dodger Stadium. And, uh, you know, that was the first and only time I let my friends talk into doing something that I really didn't think was right and I, didn't, I wasn't supposed to do. Uh, they talked me into taking this other little white kid's, you know, hard shell Dodger mm -hmm. Stadium baseball hat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I grabbed his hat and I ran away and he chased me, but I was pretty fast and, and elusive and I kind of escaped him. But I kept my eye on him. And when I saw him cry, I didn't know at the time, but I had empathy for him. And I remember mm -hmm. I walked back up to him. And to this day, I'm not sure why he chased me, because when I tapped him on the shoulder, uh, I saw such a fear in his face, you know. Mm. But I had to literally stick the, the hat back into his hand Aww. for him to take it away. And then I told my friends that I'm not going to ever do that again. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was something inside of me that said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take something that doesn't belong to me. Right. And if we have to fight about it, I also knew that it would be just as hard on them as it would be on me. And uh, so that was, that was really a defining moment for me. Mm -hmm. One thing that I always say to my kids is, is if you're going to stand firm and stand strong for what you know is right and just yeah. and true, yeah. you must remain standing even if you are the only one standing. Well, if you're cool. going to make a stand, make a stand. Make a stand. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, even if you're the only one. You know, I know, Nesby, you are uh, very active today in speaking to youth, not only here in the States, but around the world. And, and after we get back from our break, we're going to talk about that. But there was just a couple of things that I wanted to highlight is okay. after your, uh, your career at the University of Washington, actually, congratulations, because in 1994, you were selected to be on the all-century team. <laughs> wow. Can you, what an honor. Can you explain to our viewers what that means to be selected on the all-century team? For the University of Washington? Uh, that even kind of blew my mind more so than <laughs> me being an inductee into mm -hmm. the University of Washington Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, you know, a group of individuals decided that as a defensive player, I was one of the best 11 players uh, to ever play mm -hmm. at the University of Washington on defense. And if they had a 100 year team, mm -hmm. then, you know, I would be one of those guys on that team. And it was just uh, really mind boggling to me and very humbling mm. uh, to know that, you know, there were Husky fans, coaches, and others that decided that I was one of those guys. And, and to this day, that's probably uh, the, the one thing I said, even more so than being a member of the Husky Hall of Fame. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, that, that still blows me away to think that it's going to be another 90 something years, whatever it is, before. Mm you know, I'm off that team. Mm -hmm. What an incredible honor. I can, I yeah. can imagine how humbling that must have been. Yeah, a little young whippersnapper <laughs> from Compton, you know, all 172 pounds of me at the time. Uh, you know, but... Uh, you were 172? My goodness. I, when I got there, I was 172. When I left, I was 179. And you're 5'10", is that five correct? 5'10". 5'10". I mm -hmm. was 5'9 when I first got there. Uh-huh. Wow. So I grew an inch and a quarter. I always claimed that inch and a quarter. <laughs> I know you did, too. I did, I did. I did. <laughs> Okay, Nesby, so after your career as uh, uh, there at the University of Washington, excuse me, as a safety, you played 14 seasons in the NFL. 14. Well, I always say somebody had to do it, so it might as well have been <laughs> me. You know, it, it was uh, towards the end of uh, my senior year playing football, and, uh, you know, I hadn't had any offers up, up to that point. Then offers started coming in right away after that. Mm -hmm. uh, but... I mean, who's to say what might have happened if I would have stayed on that other track, you That's know, right. hanging out, doing all these other things, Went down or, or path. at least not having that honest conversation in terms of, am I doing things that are going to really give me what I say I want? Mm -hmm. And I always slow down enough to really think about what I wanted. And that's why I was able to play 14 years, because when I played, we didn't have year-round training camps like we do today. Right. And I remember when I got drafted by the Colts, uh, they had a bunch of older guys in the secondary, and I figured, you know, physically most of them couldn't, wouldn't be able to compete with me. And that was the truth. Well, I kind of flipped the switch after about my sixth year. I was like, if I stay in physical shape, young guys coming in, they're going to already know that mentally I'm ahead of them. Right. But if I can't just not be better than them, but he compete with them physically, mm -hmm. uh, that would give me a distinct advantage. And so I would always work out that second week in February. And then I realized later on that if I hadn't been released, and February rolled around, and I didn't work out, then it'd be time for me to retire. Right. And so after my 14th season, February rolled around, I didn't work out, mm -hmm. uh, it was time for me to retire. Mm -hmm. uh, but unbeknownst to me, in j late July, I did get a call back from the Seahawks. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I think, you know, once again, I, I was able to make that vow to myself and keep it because, you know, I told them that, you know, I'm not the same guy. And when you call an old guy like me, you have to be pretty bad not to keep because, you know, because they, they're going to bring you out, bring you back. You know, if you have a little bit left, right. you know, they'll keep you. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I wanted to be true to myself. So, you know, and, and that was a promise I made if February rolled around, hadn't been cut, uh, didn't start working out. And that would right. be it for me because I did pride myself with my conditioning. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it was funny because a lot of guys that, that came in, you know, in my latter years, they always talked about they couldn't believe, you know, how athletic I was late in my career. Right. But, but because was, you were so disciplined. Yeah, it, that, and that's, that's mm -hmm. it. I was disciplined and mm -hmm. I took pride in it. And, uh, 
you know, I tell people all the time, I'm, I'm going to die with quick feet. I mean, if I do drugs yeah, right now, right. you know, <laughs> guys look at me sideways, but that's, I can still do those things. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I just think it's incredible, 14 years with all the injuries and everything that's taken place in the NFL, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about concussions and stuff when we get back, but you played for the Baltimore Colts from 1979 to 1987, mm -hmm. and then the Seahawks from 88 to 93, right in there, 92, uh, 92, 90, 92, 92 season, mm -hmm. retired in 93, and that was actually the Baltimore slash Indianapolis coach because I actually followed the Mayfire trucks to Indianapolis. Oh, you followed the trucks, huh? Yeah, right. we, I we had that. just moved. But we, yeah, we had just moved back there in the spring of '83, uh -huh. and the team moved in the spring of '84. Oh, and I do remember that. Yes. Oh boy, yes, yeah, can headed. <laughs> well, I, I went up to the complex that night and couldn't believe it. So, yeah. yeah, shocking, huh? Very shocking. <laughs> but you were team captain on both teams, and you were defensive player of the year. On both teams. So yeah. on both teams. Yeah. So what an amazing career that you had. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go ahead and take a break here and uh, hear from a word from our sponsors and just moment but when we come back I want you to talk to us a little bit about how you are speaking into the lives of this generation of these kids today and how you're sowing seeds and giving back so we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break and hear a word from our sponsors and we'll be right back with Nesby Glasgow give your friends and family a taste of Iowa this holiday season with gifts from the heart of Iowa marketplace we specialize in Iowa themed gifts and gift baskets filled with wonderful Iowa products. Call, click, or visit Heart of Iowa Marketplace today. Six hundred monkeys, West Glen Town Center. Having company embarrassed by your bathroom? Give Rebath of Central Iowa a call and let them easily transform your bath into a space you can be proud of. And they can do the job in as little as one day. And Rebath has a lifetime warranty. From simply changing out your fixtures to a completely new look from floor to ceiling, your new bath won't crack, peel, rust, or mildew. You call it relaxing. We call it Rebath. Call us at 262-9075 or visit us online at rebathofcentraliowa.com. Refresh your space with a little help from JY Design. From a simple update to a fully remodeled room, JY Design has you covered. I've used her in my own personal home. She's giving me a lot of decorating advice, and I never felt like she was ever imposing her tastes on what I was trying to do, and I really appreciated that. And I have recommended Julie hundreds of times. JY Design, your home, your style, my touch. Call today for a consultation. Hi there, I'm Bob. How can I help you? Uh, my car's making kind of a tink tink sound. Is it a tink tink tink? It's got a clunk in it. Uh, it's got kind of a clunk in it. Oh, we can fix that. Great, thanks. Bob's transmission. We know the sounds your car makes and how to fix them. We are talking with Nesby Glasgow, former NFL great, Seattle Seahawk, Indianapolis, uh, and Baltimore Colts, 14 years in the NFL. And we talked a little bit about his career prior to that, but there's just a couple things I want to talk about before we transition to where you're at today and what you're doing today. Yeah. And um, one thing is, tell us, you know, what do you see are the, are the key differences between playing in the NFL in, in your day as opposed to these young guys coming out of, of school and playing in the NFL today? Uh, I think it's probably a, a number of, of differences. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing is that I think uh, we were better at compartmentalizing uh, than today's youth and athlete. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has to do with uh, the internet and everything. They're exposed to so much information. Sure. It's, it's almost like uh, we didn't wear tape until we got to college. I mean, tape, mm -hmm. tape around our ankles. Right. And so uh, we got a chance for all our ligaments and everything to develop. Mm -hmm. uh, you have so many athletes today that have high ankle sprains and right. kind of like almost non-existent when I play mm -hmm. and and probably basically because we got a chance to let our own ligaments and, and muscles and and everything develop on its own before mm -hmm. we had it you know something to protect it or right. assist it you know that reinforcement, yeah, reinforcement mm -hmm. like tape mm -hmm. and, and then secondly is that you, you have so many youth today that when they're in junior high school they're talking about the NFL where when when I was in junior high school I remember I was in the uh, the ninth grade, 
and Gardena's high school's entire secondary got Division One scholarships. Mm -hmm. So it was just my goal just to be able to start at <laughs> Gardena High School someday. You know, I wasn't running around. And, and believe me, I, I was what they call a, a little league phenom. Mm -hmm. But, right. I mean, I still was like uh, overwhelmed with the whole idea of, Will I ever be good enough to start right. at Gardena? Right. Because, uh, someday, you know, someday. Well, well it, was, it was pretty competitive <laughs> because even the little league teams I, I played for, you know, some would consider us legendary. Uh, but point being is that, you know, kids today, they, they, they see themselves being that pro athlete without really uh, getting those uh, outside indicators. Sure. And when I talk to the youth today, I always say, if people aren't asking about your number when you're in high school, mm -hmm. then you're probably not a Division One football <laughs> player. You have so many kids today that are good high school football players. Mm -hmm. Not great, but they're good high they're school good. football players. Mm -hmm. And they act like, you know, 1AA, you know, 2A, even a Division Three is not good enough for them. Well, if people aren't asking about who you are, mm -hmm. then the odds aren't really in your favor that you're a Division One athlete, right. especially if you're playing a skilled position. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I always say, people ask who was number 35 mm -hmm. when I played at Gardena. Right. You know, I was mm -hmm. this little guy, but yep. you know, I was doing a lot of things and so they it want, done. I was getting it done. <laughs> so they were like, who was that guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, to me, that's, that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how about the issue of concussions? Uh, well, that, one, once again, even, uh, when you look at how kids are coached today, it goes to that. Uh, when I was 12, 13, you know, coaches used to coach backwards. I remember that even games that I played in when I've had a concussion, mm. they could have, he could have raised, you know, three fingers. If I said two, <laughs> I was going back in the game because I've seen trainers do it on the sideline. Shake it off and get in there, huh? Yeah. Oh, no, no <laughs> doubt. You know, uh, it, it's, it's very different that mm -hmm. way. It is. It's yeah. a completely different time, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I, I, we only have a few minutes left here, uh, Nisby, and I want to move forward with what you're doing today because you're yeah. doing such a great work. Yeah. And by the way, I have to say, every, every time I run into you, it's either at a charity event or when I talk to you, you're coming from a charity event or you're on your way to a charity event. You give and give and give and give back to the community and support so many charitable organizations. And I just love to see guys like you that do that because I believe to whom much is given much is required and, um, and, and I know that you believe in that too. Well there's no question it's, it's something my mother uh, poured into uh, all her kids that you know we are better off together than we are apart mm -hmm. and if you have an opportunity to share something uh, meaningful uh, to, to at least make a positive difference in someone's life mm -hmm. then she says that you know you owe it to that individual. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, something else she shared with all of us is that, you know, and she meant it. I, I could tell when she made the statement, you know, I don't ever want to hear about you treating anyone with disrespect. Yes. No matter where they are in life, mm -hmm. no matter what they do in life. Mm -hmm. And and she said it with such conviction that I, I bought into it hook, mm -hmm. line, and sinker. Yes. So, uh, and so if I could ever uh, get involved with charities and, and, and try to be, you know, and add on to help make a difference. Uh, more times than not, you know, sometimes I overbook, but I'm going to do it mm -hmm. because I, I think that if we work more together as one, then we will have more together as all. Mm -hmm. And uh, amen. You mm -hmm. know, it's uh, I, I don't I don't believe in survival of the fittest. Right. Uh, I, I think you know we all should always be there for each other, mm -hmm. and we should always be there trying to make each other. Better. That's right. You, you know that event that we did last spring at the over at the high school yes. with, the, with the football players. Mm -hmm. uh, it was this last May we did this event, and he was our keynote speaker. And you were speaking to high school football players yeah. at, at this mm -hmm. high school. And the, the 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 speech that you gave, the words that you that you shared, were words of life. And it was so inspirational. The boys were moved. The feedback was phenomenal. The parents were so impressed. So you're doing this all around the world. Uh, your involvement here is project director at the Pacific Institute. Mm -hmm. um, you're one of the, the key facilitators there and you're involved in the, the Youth Academy Initiative. You, you're doing this, um, you know, just out of the goodness of your heart. You're, you're locked in and partnered with other charities. You're doing it through, um, through the, the Pacific Institute, not only here in America, but in other countries. Where else have you, have you gone and, and spoken? Uh, well, I've, I've gone uh, down to uh, 
Guatemala. Uh -huh. uh, my partner Antoine has gone to Costa Rica uh -huh. and, and Ghana. Uh -huh. And you're doing this all across the country and, yeah. and around the world, literally. Um, it's, it's, it is very um, inspiring, the work that you're doing. And if you're interested in, um, in having Nesby Glasgow come and speak at your event to the youth or, uh, or adults, um, he is a man, the well runs deep within you, and he can yeah. share these words of wisdom if you go to nesbyglasgow.com, is that correct? Uh, no, I would say go to the Pacific Institute. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, you'll you'll see that then then contact information. You see contact information, go mm -hmm. to Pacific Institute, you'll see a PX two mm -hmm. a logo. Hit that. Okay. You know. Or you can always call uh unfortunately I don't have the eight hundred number. That's okay. Two oh six uh six two eight forty eight hundred. Two oh six six two eight forty eight hundred and just leave a message for me and I'll be sure to get back to you ASAP. Okay, fantastic. Now, uh, shifting gears here, after the show wraps here today, mm -hmm. we have a couple games that are coming up on Fox today. We have the Panthers and the Bears at home, and the Cowboys and the Giants, and the Cowboys are at home. So, uh, who are your picks? I'm going to go with the Bears. Uh, probably one of the, uh, the more fierce, uh, affected teams that play a different brand of, of football at home than mm -hmm. they do on the road. Uh, mm -hmm. Their, their defense seems to always be so much more aggressive mm -hmm. in, in that really attack mode. And then I like the Giants on the, on the road against uh, the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Giants' defense, uh, I expect them to really uh, shut down and dominate the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Okay, and who was your pick for the Super Bowl this year? You know, I don't really have a pick. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I just think that... Uh, Top two? Uh, there, there's so much parity in mm -hmm. the National Football League today. Mm -hmm. uh, today, any team can win. I mean, the talent is is pretty evenly distributed well, among, well, amongst is. the top uh, ten teams, don't well, you think? Well, I think so, and, and mm -hmm. I think so. You know, a lot of it, you know, comes down to uh, what I think the difference makers are: coaching and uh, and the culture. So there you go. You heard, you heard it from Nesby Glasgow yourself, right here in Seattle, Washington. So I want to get you back on the show in a few weeks. Actually, what I'd like to do is fly you into Des Moines, Iowa, get you there in the studio, and uh, let me see if we can't hook you up with some speaking engagements because I know that mm -hmm. the, um, the, the youth and the coaches of that region um, would love to hear what you have to say. I would love and, to. And, and tap into your, your years of experience and your words of wisdom. So Nesby, thank you so much for joining us right here on uh, the Solmanad Show with Sonia. And we look forward to having you on again and we'll see who wins the Super Bowl. All right, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nesby. All right. All right, y'all, back to Iowa. We'll see you back in the studio shortly, so ciao for now. Hey, y'all, I hope you enjoyed the interview with Nesby Glasgow. He's always a delight to have on the show. So uh, thanks again for tuning in today. We hope to see you next week on the Solmanad Show with Sonia. So until then, you be blessed in whatever you put your hands to do. Until then, ciao. Wardrobe provided by The Hall Tree. Plants and flowers provided by Gertz House Gallery. Set provided and staged by Interiors by Andrea. Hair provided by Michelle Mayola.